Five most disturbing internet rabbit holes. The 2006 volleyball incident. On July 2nd, 2017, an anonymous user posted a thread on 4chan's paranormal board saying, how does one live after taking the red pill on the 2006 volleyball incident? Well, well, now, not. if you're wondering what that incident was, it's a strange and disturbing story. The post was referring to a supposed mass shooting where a gunman killed 14 people during a high school volleyball game in either South Dakota or Nebraska back in 2006. Oh, yikes. But here's where things get strange. If you search for any information about it online, you'll find nothing. No news articles, no official casualty reports, nothing. What, is it Just took conspiracy it theory websites and the occasional Reddit post asking if it even happened. It's like the whole event either never existed or was what? somehow erased from history. But despite the silence online, there are many people who claim they remember hearing about it. Some even say they were at Mount Rushmore around that time and heard a report about it on the radio. For a long time, the only evidence of the incident on the internet was this still frame from a home video that was supposedly taken just before the incident with the date September 27, 2006 embedded Why? on it. Why would it take that it is, down? until some ordinary gamer, a YouTuber who often dives into dark web rabbit holes, discovered more evidence. While browsing the Late Nights forum on a 4chan-like site, he came across the gruesome pictures of a bloody school gym that were allegedly taken soon after the shooting had already happened. So Whoa. right here, uh, let's go down a little bit over here. Anonymous with the gift, appreciate it, dude. Why would they take down all information on it? They've got uh, 2006 volley. Oh my God. Oh, we're gonna have to blur this one. Jesus Christ, that's actually like death footage. I think I remember this. I was searching around for some sort of proof of this happening. And apparently this is a snippet from a home video. I got, oh my God. We we have to Mad. we have to blur that out. But I gotta make sure we we note that and blur it real quick. Let me add that to the notes here. Jesus. Mod. It's like an actual straight up bloody massacre. It's like VHS recorded. I this this has to be from like a movie. There's no way. This has to be from like some movie. It's crazy as hell. That it's got like a, it's got like a CBI not for release. Like I assume CBI stands for like some sort of a governmental organization or something. What does CBI that mean, is chat? So messed up. I feel I feel, I I feel like I should have known this or something. That's I don't even know if that's like, like a conspiracy. How is that a conspiracy? It's actually like death put unless it's from like some some movie or something that we don't know about. Jesus Christ. That is actually the most chilling thing I've seen. We we're like 5 minutes into this recording and already it's just like death footage is hit the building in the bottom yo what i don't get though is why would they take down all this shooting in like information and pictures and stuff unless it was too gruesome like the pictures that was captured you know what i'm saying because like there's other shootings that's happened where it's not been taken down you know what i mean so what makes this different bro shelly thank you so much for the 500 bits shelly right corner was the text cbi not for release which i'll do my best to show you while blurring everything else out this has led okay. to some pretty wild theories being spread all over the internet. According to the most popular ones, the incident did happen, but it was covered up by the American government. What? Why? As the story goes, the government was trying to assassinate someone who was attending this high school volleyball game. Things got out of hand, however, and a lot of the young volleyball players were caught in the crossfire. And Wait. since this would have caused tons of backlash from the public- Wait, hold the fuck up! Wait, was that a conspiracy? Or like, that's actually like- did you say that's a conspiracy? Spread all over the internet. According to the most popular ones, the incident did happen, but it was covered up by the American government. As the story goes, the government was trying to assassinate someone who was attending this high school volleyball game. Things got out of hand, however, and a lot of the young volleyball players were caught in the crossfire. And yeah, since this would have caused true, tons but... of backlash from the public, the government instructed the news media to not talk about the story and also paid the victim's families to keep them quiet. What? However, while the US government is no stranger to covering up the truth, I have to admit, this one is quite far-fetched. Keeping something- Yeah, listen, no, 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 no. Bro, if someone's kid got killed in a shooting, no, like, bro, not all the parents, maybe some of the parents, but not all of them are going to stay quiet about that. You know what I'm saying? This big under wraps for There's so no long way. feels pretty out there. At some point, you'd think the truth would slip out. 
A somewhat more reasonable theory is that this is a classic case of the Mandela effect, where large groups of people collectively misremember something. Okay. Yeah, and coincidentally true. enough, I actually did find a similar incident that happened in 2006 in that region. In the Platte Canyon High School situation, 53-year-old Dwayne Roger Morrison took seven female students hostage, attacked them, and ended up shooting one of them. This also took place on September 27, 2006, which is the same date on which the alleged photo was taken before the incident. Its location in Colorado- Yo, you know what? It could be just a big Mandela effect. Like, that does happen. That might also explain why people from the Midwest remember hearing about it on the news. But there are some major differences. Most notably, the Platte Canyon incident had nothing to do with a volleyball game, and there was only one death. But in saying all of that, the most likely scenario is that all of this is a hoax. While researching this incident, I came across an interesting post on the forum Above Top Secret from 2017. In this post, the OP was talking about creating a hoax in which multiple school shootings happened in 2006 in tiny towns, but any information relating to these incidents has been mysteriously erased from the public record. But if that's the case, the images that some ordinary gamer came across, where did they come from? Considering it's been over seven years since this first contraction on the internet, it's unlikely we'll ever know the answer to this disturbing internet rabbit hole. You know what? I reckon it's a hoax. I, I don't see why the government would Great actually take that down. Morons. On August 8, 2014, a user by the name Simon Pred J posted a video on YouTube titled Grave Robbing for Morons. This was a digital re-upload of a very old VHS video, an extremely chilling one at that. In it, a young man goes into disturbing detail explaining step by step how to rob graves and sell the remains on the black market. Yo, that is by the fucked. Or the nose. That is fucked. You pull fucked. out, put your finger all the way in. There is nothing there that will hurt you at all. Or you have to make sure of that. There's nothing that can hurt you. Do not be afraid. Pull it out like that. Do not pull it by the teeth or else it'll break out like that and you will have holes. What makes this video even more unsettling isn't- Wait, chat, does the teeth actually stay like that, bro? I know teeth are bones. But does it actually stay like that? Like, they're white, mate. They're white. Is he, like, cleaning them or something? In just its content, but the mystery surrounding it. No one knows who the man in the video is. To this day, his identity remains unknown, and no one has come forward to claim responsibility. This has left the internet in two fiercely opposing camps. How is that identity or no, mate? I can see him. Do we not have facial recognition? Like, is it is it hard now? I thought it was easy to find people what you got in the face. Some believe this is authentic footage Wait, really? of a real Cold grave King. robber. Others argue it's an obscure horror short crafted purely for shock value. Surprisingly, I came across evidence that supports both sides of the argument while researching this topic. One undeniable fact, however, is that the original video is extremely old. The earliest mention of its title, Grave Robbing for Morons, I found on the internet was a now defunct online store for horror VHS tapes called Shocking Videos. What's good, Angel? This website listed the tape for sale in April of 2003, stating, What we have here is genuine camcorder footage of a drunken teenage stutter giving a half-hour lecture on how to steal body parts from graveyards for fun and profit while holding a fresh, rotting skull in his hands. Weird. That said, the original video is likely from the late 80s. We can clearly see the VHS box for the 1987 Evil Dead 2 movie 5 minutes and 43 seconds into the video. And to narrow it down even more, there's an issue of Horror FX magazine visible in the bottom left corner at the same time. This specific cover was a part of a unique Fangoria horror magazine edition released in July 1989, which means the video was probably shot around that year. Yo, this is showing me signs of someone that ends up being a serial killer, bro. Like, someone needs to find this person. If he's not in prison already, like, bro, I guarantee it. If you look into him, he's done some fuck shit. The horror memorabilia scattered throughout the footage implies that whoever created this video might have been a die-hard horror fan just trying to make something creepy for the thrill of it. Oh, that, and while maybe. most of the gruesome advice given in the video feels very authentic, like describing ways to remove the skull from a body that hasn't fully decomposed yet, there are also sections that seem extremely goofy. Like when the host suggests knocking out witnesses so they think it was all just a dream. Never leave witnesses. If you have to knock them out, knock them out so that way they think it's a dream. <laughs> this gives further credence to the theory that the subject doesn't have any real grave robbing experience and is just making it all up for the video. 
On the other hand, some people argue that- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Unless he's got, oh, like, a good weapon. Who's he knocking at? Who is he knocking at? Know what I'm saying? No one. No one, bro. The skull he's showing in the video is far too detailed to be fake. As for the inconsistency in the advice, that could be explained by the theory that this was likely his first time robbing a grave, and that he was simply making things up to himself. seem more knowledgeable on the topic than he actually was. But this is where things start getting really eerie. Toward the end of the tape, the guy almost mumbles his full name, but stops himself before saying his entire last name. Okay, this was made by, uh, by Anthony. Yes, uh, uh, well, as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. And in 1999, a man named Anthony Casamassima was arrested in New York for stealing an expensive stained glass window from a cemetery. What? There was a real possibility that this was the same person who made the grave robbing for Moron's Guide. Probably is! That being said, there are a few inconsistencies that say otherwise. For instance, I did not find any charges against Anthony Casamassima that mentioned him desecrating bodies. He was more into stealing valuable artifacts like stained glass. Well, he might have upgraded! The body, the, the schools might not be making money anymore. He might be, screw it, I'm, I'm going to have to steal the valuables now. And more importantly, Casa Massimo was 40 when he was arrested in 1999. If he made the tape, he would have been around 30 at the time. However, given the young appearance of the video's subject, that seems highly unlikely. Mm. I also found a couple more theories as well, but most of them lead to dead ends. One such theory claims the guy in the video might be Craig A. Bradley, who was arrested in 1995 for stealing human remains from a cemetery in upstate New York. Craig would have been around 24 when the grave robbing video was filmed, which fits with the young appearance of the guy in the tape. Plus, he even looks a bit like him. Kind of. However, the issue with this theory is that Craig doesn't have the stutter that was prominent in the original video. Usually, you know, winter months I'm laid off. Yo, you can lose a stutter though. Like you can grow out of that shit, right? Or not? It's winter months I don't usually pay. Dig for you and everything. So you dig and your friend digs, and then it's another f uh, uh, friend digs. You have to find some place really so. so, uh, 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 so uh, secluded. So that Yo, did bro just fucking malfunction? Did bro just fucking mama malfunction? What the? There's. There's. This, uh, no interruptions, okay? Now, he could have faked the stutter in the original video for some reason. However, people on the internet find that extremely unlikely given how real it feels. Grave robber or what, actor, that the stutter is stuff. real. I've known several people with really bad stutters, and it's such a specific, uncontrollable behavior that makes it hard to fake. This kid's stutter feels unique and authentic. I've never seen an actor in a movie fake a stutter that felt this real. It's possible one day the person seen in the video will come forward with the truth, but for now we have no idea who the person is or whether or not this extremely realistic looking grave robbing video is real. Strange sounds- Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know people that's had stuttered line like thrown out of it and that. The sky. Over the past 50 plus years, there have been numerous reports of people hearing mysterious sounds coming from the sky. In some cases, the mysterious noise resembles the sound of screeching metal, like someone dragging heavy metal furniture across the floor. Aliens! What the fuck is that? However, the most commonly reported noise is a low-frequency hum that persists in the area. What? Those who can hear these sounds describe them as omnipresent and extremely annoying. And according to the BBC, the humming noise has been linked to at least one person ending their own life in the UK. However, while what? there are likely many legit reports of people- I'm in the UK- I don't hear shit. I don't hear shit. I hear anything. I don't, you have to cover your ears? It just sounds like an empty void. 
Like it was, it was, it sounds like how I imagine space to sound. Oh, you have to go outside. Oh. People hearing a mysterious well, humming, I doing which that. we'll get to in a bit. Many of the claims are either fake or can be explained quite easily. For instance, the metallic screeching noise could simply be from a nearby railroad with a long freight train rounding a corner and causing vibrations. No, no, I, I have a brain, bro. What I mean... Oh, fuck. Some of these trains are incredibly lengthy and can take several minutes to pass. Similarly, in another video, you can hear what sounds like an extremely loud trumpet. Oh wait, that's the sound. The original poster of this video titled this as a judgment trumpet, referring to the divine trumpet described in the Christian faith. However, given the poor weather conditions in the footage, it's likely just a malfunctioning tornado siren like this. Well, that's not in the UK because we don't have that. A few of these videos are also outright faked, with the mysterious sounds being edited in to generate views. Notice how the birds around the area appear completely unaffected by the loud, ominous noise, which yeah, would be chilling. unlikely if the sound was genuinely overwhelming the environment. Birds have sharper hearing than humans, and they would likely react. That said, there are still thousands of reports from people who can't be easily debunked or labeled as fake. Unlike the examples I've shown so far, the vast majority of seemingly authentic reports involve the persistent, low-frequency hum. This strange phenomenon seems to trace back to Bristol, England in the late 1970s. The city council received hundreds of complaints from residents about a strange noise that was audible at night. One local newspaper even asked readers in the city, have you heard the hum, and almost 800 people said they had. What? French scientists back then proposed that the sound might originate from the ocean, suggesting that continuous waves could be vibrating the ocean floor. Now, this explanation might have been true for Bristol, but as time went on, more and more people around the world started reporting these disturbing humming noises. It's aliens. aliens. And it appears the Bristol hum is still present to this day. Wait, hold up. I got a question. Humming noises. And it appears the... I got a question. Why is no one in Africa hearing it? Other than one person in Kenya. Hmm? And Tunisia. And Egypt. Why is no one in Africa hearing it, bro? Do aliens not visit Africa? The Bristol hum is still present to this day. There are many theories that attempt to explain the bizarre global phenomenon. And these can get into some truly out there conspiracies, like aliens or secret underground civilizations in the hollow earth. However, the most plausible explanation I found suggests Simulation. that these sounds are more connected to the listeners themselves rather than their surroundings. What do you mean? Things like hypersensitive ears and early signs of hearing issues like tinnitus could be a major contributor. Another possible reason could be the increasing levels of anxiety and stress. A BBC researcher also noted that she only heard the hum when she was exhausted and stressed out, which further supports the notion of this mysterious hum being a psychosomatic or stress-related phenomenon. Hey, well, if it was stress-related, look at New York then, because um, that's where like, all the business people are. They'd be stressed from business. Okay. It does look like a lot of people getting stressed out here. Chat, you guys are American. Would you say North Dakota is the least stressful state in the US? Would you say that? Or oh, nah? Oh no, Wyoming! My bad. Wyoming is pretty much near. Hasn't got anyone other than half a person. Is Wyoming the least stressful state? Would you say that? Maybe. Maybe. The notion of this mysterious hum being a psychosomatic or stress-related phenomenon. During my research, I even found the video claiming to capture the strange humming sound. But when I watched it, there was nothing unusual, just regular environmental noise. Yo, yo, nah, shout out to people that live in Wyoming, bro. Yo, does anyone in chat live in Wyoming? Come on. Surely one person lives in Wyoming. Bro, there's 160 people here. 150 of you from America. There's 50 states. 
Surely one of you is from where... No one. Okay, so a man was born there, but moved out. <laughs> why is it that bad? It's beautiful. So why does no one live there? No one actually lives there. <laughs> Wait, not one person. Like 10 people live there. <laughs> if they did, they wouldn't be on Twitch. <laughs> okay. It's beautiful, but not habit. Okay. Only 500k people live in Wyoming. Yo, and to say Wyoming is pretty much bigger than... Wyoming looks like it's bigger than the UK, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I find it so funny how the only person that was born in Wyoming moved out of it. <laughs> It's entirely possible that the person who recorded it was hearing something from inside their body, misinterpreting it as an external <laughs> sound, which further supports the stress-related theory. However, this doesn't explain the hundreds or even thousands of other oh, really videos that up. do include the hum. And given the endless amounts of possibilities for each individual case, I doubt we'll get a concrete answer anytime soon. I trust them. John Lang Fresno Police. Who's John Lang? On March 20th, 2015, a YouTube channel by the name Lang Marine uploaded a three and a half minute video titled Fresno LE Harassment, Ford Crew Cab that stalked me and my residence numerous times. Okay. The video showed the same vehicle driving past the camera twice in three minutes. The uploader was a 51 year old former Marine named John Lang living in Fresno, California. The video footage came from a security camera he had installed outside his home. Okay, that's and twice. in the description of this video, he provided much needed context behind the oddly disturbing encounter. According to Lang, he was critical of the way Fresno PD and Fresno Fire utilized their budgets online. So now they were stalking and harassing him in retaliation, and the Ford truck in the video belonged to either the Fresno Police Department or the Sheriff's Office. The next day, he posted another video of a man walking his dog outside his home. The video showed the dog and his owner stopping outside Lang's home for a few seconds and moving on. Nothing too unusual. However, Lang claimed that the person in the video was a plainclothed police officer who was conditioning Lang's dog so that it wouldn't attack if the same officer broke into his home later. Over the next 10 or so months, Lang continued posting videos of shady activity captured by his security camera, like a guy in plain clothes coming up to his home, taking a look and walking away immediately. What? Or a police truck stopping outside his home for a few seconds and then driving away. What? However, the most disturbing of these videos showed a mysterious black van stopping outside his home, filming it with a massive camera for about 30 seconds and quickly driving away. What? Lang claimed that the device in their hand was a thermal imaging sensor and they were trying to determine whether or not he was home. By January of 2016, Lang was fully convinced that the Fresno police were planning an assassination. On the 16th of January, he posted a video about a cleaning company van parked outside his home. In the description of the video, he wrote, If I turn up missing or dead tomorrow, remember this van. I think I seen a couple of guys sneak out the side door and into the building when it was parked in the carport this afternoon. I've been causing the city of Fresno a lot of problems recently, which I now regret. Unfortunately, Yo. this would be the last video Lang would post on YouTube, because just a few days later, firemen found him dead inside a burning home with multiple stab wounds on his body. Fuck off! This was sad news for people who were following the story. However, this was only the beginning of a much bigger conspiracy. You see, when the news of his death initially broke, the report stated that he had a few stab wounds on his upper back as well. If this were true, it would validate all of Lang's worries about getting assassinated. This would also put the Fresno PD as the number one suspect for his murder. However, when the Fresno coroner released Lang's autopsy report, it only mentioned three self-inflicted stab wounds on his chest, and there was no mention of any stab wounds on his back. Was the earlier report a mistake, or were the Fresno police trying to hide their crime? That is crazy! This inconsistency led to tons of backlash and even a petition to reopen his case. But it remained closed. To this day, the John Lang case sits as a mystery. Was he actually getting stalked, or was he just severely mentally ill and paranoid? No, 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 Listen, listen, listen. I'll be the first person to call out if it's paranoia. Listen, Detective L3 on the motherfucking case. This motherfucker has enough footage of where 
Summer's going down, bro. You te you're telling me that paranoia? A, a big black van fucking pull up with some massive ass camera? You're telling me that's paranoia? That ain't paranoia, bro. That ain't fucking paranoia, bro. No, that's mad. That's mad. That's mad. Was that's he mad. actually getting stalked, or was he just severely mentally ill and paranoid? From my research, the answer seems to be a mix of- Now, chat, I would. I would say I will raise a fund to investigate the Fresno police, but I'm not going to do that, and I'm not going to say that because I don't want to end up dead. So, it is what it is, bro. I feel bad for the guy, but it's case closed. I feel bad for the guy, bro. But that, that, that doesn't look like it's paranoid to me, but I, I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. I don't want to end up dead, bro. No, I'm all good. Of both. First and foremost, it's worth Mad. mentioning that the Fresno police are well known for being ripe with corruption. A Reddit user mentioned a story he knew about the PD, stating, I mean, my friend's dad was FPD for decades, and Jerry Dyer showed up with some officers and threatened him back in the late 90s, so it wouldn't surprise me if the cops were intimidating this dude. That's crazy. So, did the Fresno PD retaliate against Lang? Maybe. What's more likely is that Lang was getting more paranoid and losing his mind over time. From what I can see, the man walking his dog is doing just that, walking his dog, and claiming that he was somehow conditioning Lang's dog in just a couple of seconds is pretty out there. Right, Even no, 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 but I feel, I feel like, one, he's got a right to be paranoid with everything that's going on, right? From all the footage we've just seen, which I bet there's more, yeah? Of course, it, of course, when, like, if I was him, you would mix in a few para just paranoid footage with legit. Bro, that's not paranoia, someone pulling out your house, outside your house with a fat-ass fucking camera. That's not paranoia, bro. That don't happen. Did you list your fucking house on, you know, for sale? Nah, bro. Nah. Why is there a camera? Are you a celebrity? Nah, bro. Why is there a camera, bro? The suspicious van can be explained quite easily since the device shown in the video was just a film camera on a gimbal, not some high-tech thermal imaging sensor. But who does that? As for why they were shooting like that from a vehicle, they were likely indie filmmakers who just didn't have the proper permissions from the city. However, all of this is just conjecture on my part. The real evidence that proves Lang's deteriorating mental- Yo, the coincidence of that just being indie film developers is crazy. The coincidence- Yo, chat, just say- just say me and chat if- if you've ever looked out your window and you've seen a fucking amateur film crew with a camera that big outside recording your house. Accuracy, does it happen to a lot of you or not? I'm guessing no one, right? I'm guessing absolutely no one. And if you say me, I know you're fucking lying. <laughs> Total stayed is the fact that he turned off the cameras he had in his home a day before the incident. The last saved footage on these cameras was of him sitting with a kitchen knife in his hand. DJ, okay. Not only that, but when the fire department arrived on the scene, all the entrances to his home were barricaded securely from the inside. If this was truly a murder, the killer wouldn't have been able to escape the crime scene without removing one of these barricades. Wait, what? Ultimately, if there was some big murder conspiracy behind Lang's death, I doubt we'll learn about it over eight years later. Wait, that's weird. Weird, bro. Evil stick. In November of 2014, Nicole Allen purchased a pink princess wand for a two-year-old daughter at the dollar store in Linden Avenue in Kettering. The name of the wand was Evil Stick, which is quite bizarre on its own, but likely went unnoticed by Nicole. Oh my god. And was we watched this in a horror video. We've seen this in a horror video. Yo, fuck this stick. Fuck this stick, bro. Just If you don't know this stick, just wait. Evil Stick, just wait. which is quite bizarre on its own, but likely went unnoticed by Nicole. Just wait, bro. However, the stick also promised things like luster, beauty, and wonderful music. The box art also featured the character Sakura Kinomoto, who is the protagonist of a popular Japanese animated show called Cardcaptor Sakura. This is wild. In the show, Sakura is essentially a magical princess. So, the inclusion of just a cute-looking character made Nicole drop her guard even further but she couldn't have been more wrong. The thing is, the inclusion of this character on the box art suggested an Asian origin for the product. 
And looking back, the evil stick does have a small, and I do mean small, resemblance to one of the ones Sakura uses in the show. The evil stick was most definitely a bootleg version of a product that should have looked something like this had it been official. However, the evil stick was much more sinister than just being a bad product. Unlike its official counterparts, the manufacturers of the evil stick bootleg had free reign to do whatever they wanted. And it's what they chose to do with this freedom that was utterly disturbing. You see, the top of the wand had a shiny foil fitted in, likely to imitate the shiny star in the official wand. However, this foil was hiding an image under it, and when Nicole's daughter accidentally removed the foil while playing with the wand, she was greeted with a downright disturbing image of a creepy looking woman slitting her own wrist. This was likely petrifying for the little girl, but that wasn't all. If you press the button on the wand, instead of the wonder- Bro, what the fuck? This is why my kid ain't having no toys. They ain't having no toys. My kid's being born and getting a phone, laptop, iPad, iMac, everything given to them from birth, bro. From birth. You know, having no toys. Wonderful music it promised, the wand played a haunting laugh. This also turned on a light behind the creepy image, so the little girl would have likely seen it even if she hadn't removed the foil. That's full. Oh my god. Oh my god. When Nicole found out about the disturbing truth, she made her findings public in hopes of getting this creepy toy banned from stores. News coverage of the evil stick quickly- But the company needs to be sued, bro! The company needs to be sued! It went viral, but the toy remained as mysterious as it was creepy. And the disturbing image concealed within the toy was traced back to French photographer Butcher Ludwig, who appears to be a master of creating the most nightmarish artworks one can imagine. Nearly all of his work is too graphic for YouTube. For most of them, however, even a quick glance is enough to trigger your fight or flight response. As for why the gory, horror-filled work of his photograph was stolen to be included in a children's toy, That's no one knows false. for sure. The only other thing people learned about the evil stick after examining its package was that it was manufactured in China, and that's it. The well, that don't mean anything. I swear 99% of fucking global fucking items is made in China. In, in fucking 99% of everything's made in China. Packaging didn't have the name of the manufacturer. I even looked up the universal product code embedded in its barcode and couldn't find any relevant information through that either. 